Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be making over this E-Type Jaguar, which is a number 32B and was made the same year I was born, which was in 1962. This model was donated by a subscriber from Canada named Michael Bellafontaine. So thank you very much for that, Michael, and I hope you enjoy the show. These Jaguars came out with clear or green windows. This one has clear windows. They also came out not only in red, but in a metallic bronze color. So this one's been pretty badly knocked about. As you can see, there's no real dents or damage, but there's hardly any paint left on this thing. The tires look a little bit worn out too, and the hubs are filthy dirty. So as usual, I just drill out the rivets to remove the base. Now it's time to remove the interior and the glass. The plastic windscreen is quite dull and shows normal wear and tear. Next I shall drill some holes in these rivet posts and then thread them to use when I put the model back together. These are the types of screws I use to reassemble the model when I've finished doing it up. They are button headed M2 Allen screws. I put a bit of tape around my drill so that I don't drill too deep. After I've drilled out the holes in the rivet post, I then cut a thread using this tap. You can see it has three cutting edges and three areas known as flutes, where all the iron filings are collected. These flutes need to be periodically cleaned during the tapping of a thread. A small drop of oil aids in the process. So I just screw it down gently and back it out periodically and clean all the iron filings off of the end. Here I am doing it a second time and going a little bit deeper this time. Here using a toothpick you can see I'm cleaning out the flutes. Now that the hole has had a thread cut in it, I do a test fit of one of the M2 screws to see if I've gone deep enough. Well, don't they look good? Now it's on to stripping and painting of the body and chassis. After I've stripped it, I'm going to paint it with this Tamiya TS85 Mica Red. This restoration is for people that do not own a airbrush. I'm just going to be using tins of aerosol paint for this makeover to show how it can be done without the use of an airbrush. I'm applying the paint stripper using a spare brush, which I use solely for this job. After the paint has been loosened and starts to blister, I then use this toothbrush to remove the paint from the model. I do it in a bath of water as the water neutralizes the paint stripper. That's the body done, now for the base. Well that came off quite easily, didn't it? If you can see the wheels on this model, they are very finely detailed. The hubs have got spokes on them. Now you can see these spoked wheels get very dirty so I'm going to use a brush and some soapy water 
to clean all the muck out that is collected between the spokes. Now I'm not removing these wheels today because as I said this is a, a makeover for someone who does not have specialised equipment. So instead of removing the wheels I'm simply masking them off so when I spray the base black the wheels won't get any paint on them. I'm using 3M, that's MMM masking tape for this job. After I've wrapped the wheels, I tuck all the ends in at the back using a toothpick. This is now ready to paint black. Usually on these models there is always a protrusion of some description which you can hold the part that you're going to paint with some uh, tongs. That's why you don't get mucky fingers. For the undercoat I'm using an aerosol can of Tamiya Light Grey Primer. Now I'd like to introduce this new machine that I've made. Other restorers manually polish their vehicles before applying the paint. Well that was too much like hard work for me, so I've invented this machine that does the polishing process for me. I use cotton balls and a special secret solution that I call diamond class polishing solution. I only add about half a jar of the polishing solution to polish this vehicle. It needs to be just enough so that the vehicle remains submerged during the polishing process. Next, using tongs, I place the unpolished model into the solution and ensure that it is fully submerged. I will now mount the cleaning chamber to the body of the machine. On this machine there are two polishing cycles to choose from. One is called Shine and one is Mega, which means Mega Shine. Well, I'm just going to start off on Shine and let's see how it goes. Well, I can already see some improvement. I think I'll switch it up to Mega. Oh wow! You can really see the metal starting to shine brightly from within the polishing chamber. Okay, well I think that's enough. I don't want to overdo it. So here you can see I am wearing a welding helmet. The metal is extremely highly reflective after the treatment and the reflected light can damage your eyes if you look directly at it. I'm going to fish the model out of the jug now so you can see the full effect. Wow, that is so much better than I had anticipated. Look at it gleam. I'm happy with that. Here you can see the body has been covered with light grey undercoat. The metal was so bright and shiny that I was unable to film this part of the makeover. So now it's time for the top coat colour. I'm using Tamiya spray paint TS85 which is bright mica red and it should look very similar to the original model. This paint covers super quick and I'm only going to give it maybe two coats. It comes out of the can with quite a heavy spray. But it is a beautiful colour and it dries 
with a really high gloss finish. I use these magnetic paintbrush clamps to support my models whilst they are drying. Here I've placed a glass uh, salad bowl over the model to keep the dust off. Now I'm going to paint the base with this black satin paint, straight from the hardware shop. Just a couple of light coats and the job is done. I place that under the salad bowl also, once again to keep the dust off. Whilst that paint's drying, I'm going to clean the tyres. They are a little bit rough around the edges, this model's had a lot of play. So I actually used some very, very fine wet and dry paper and just rubbed around the edges of the tyres just to take off a few little burrs of rubber that were there. And whilst I'm about it, I'm cleaning the windscreen. The windscreen came really clean. Unfortunately, it does show some minor signs of damage and wear and tear. So I'm using this metal polish and a cotton bud to try and polish some of the minor scratches out of it. It doesn't take too long and when you're finished it's actually quite rewarding to see how much better it looks. It may take uh, two or three attempts to get it to the standard that you're happy with. So that's all the, the minor abrasions uh, polished out. So I'm quite happy how that transparency uh, came good with the polish. But for the finishing touch now, I'm going to submerge the transparency in a bath of self-shining floor polish. So I just gently dunk it under and make sure that I don't get any air bubbles on it. I shake off the excess and place it on a piece of kitchen towel and then once again use a small glass bowl as a dust shield and leave it to dry. When it's dry this is what you're left with. It looks almost brand new. Now that the mica red has dried, I'm going to put on a pearl clear, which is a Tamiya paint TS65. What's special about this pearl clear is that in the paint there are some very, very minute flecks of silver, almost like stardust. And when you spray it on top of the red, it gives a beautiful metallic look to the paint. Now the base is dried, I'll unmask the wheels. They still look a little bit plain. So I'm going to brighten them up with this chrome marker pen. I'm actually diluting it with some mineral terps. And this way it will run more freely in between the gaps in the spokes. If you don't dilute it, you do run the risk of clogging up the gaps in the spokes with heavy blobs of silver ink. Here's a close up to show you how good they look when I finish painting them. Now it's time to reassemble the model. 
I freshened these tyres up with a black wash made with Tamiya X1 black paint and it was thinned with Tamiya thinners. This wash is just painted onto the tyres with a soft brush and after it's dried the tyres look rejuvenated. I noticed that the tyre on the front left had a small nick in the sidewall so I took it off and flipped it over so that the good side would be showing out. I am wearing rubber gloves here because I don't want to run the risk of leaving a fingerprint or a thumbprint on the model as I'm assembling it. My little finger is exposed so that I can still use my mobile phone when I am recording the footage. After installing the windscreen and the interior, I place the base on and fix it into place using two colour matched screws. So this is what we started with. As you may remember, it had a lot of play wear on it. Hardly any paint and scuffed up tyres. The wheel hubs looked a little bit grotty, as did the windscreen. So this is what it looks like now, with a fresh coat of red stardust metallic paint spruced up wheels and tyres, polished windscreen and a detailed interior. I'm sure you will agree that this car has been transformed into a thing of beauty. This car has now been snapped up at the auction by Lord Charles Featherspoon III for a bargain price of only $100,000. For its first run, he has driven it over to Lady Charrington Smythe's Manor to take her out to the local inn for a ploughman's lunch and a half pint of Bishop's Finger. What a wonderful way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Thank you so much for watching Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. I hope you enjoyed the show. Till next time, goodbye. So guys, it's already lifted up or that looked pretty that worked quite well.